we're covering our last two measuring tools together because straight edges are often used with feeler gauges to check for flatness. You can also use feeler gauges by themselves to check for clearance. In a typical set of feeler gauges, thicknesses range from a few thousandths to 25 thousandths of an inch or more. Metric equivalents are also often printed on the blades. Let's look at a few of the clearances on an engine you might check with a feeler gauge, beginning with ring end gap. Ring end gap is the distance between the ends of the piston ring when it is installed in a cylinder. It needs to be maintained within limits. If it's too close, damage to the ring and cylinder wall can result. Too wide of a gap can cause poor sealing. To check ring end gap, use a piston to push the piston ring into the cylinder bore. This ensures the ring remains square. The ring must be at least one half inch from the bottom of the bore. Try inserting different feeler gauges into the space at the ends of the piston ring until you find a feeler gauge that fits, but which still has a slight drag as it is pulled through the gap. This is the size of the ring end gap. Compare the result to the specification in the service manual. Piston ring side clearance is another check made with a feeler gauge. With rings installed on the piston, determine which feeler gauge fits best between the rings and ring lands. Comparing the results to the limits in the appropriate service manual will tell you whether the side clearance is within specifications. Clearance that is excessive indicates worn pistons or rings. Clearance that is too tight often indicates a damaged land or carbon that has not been removed from the piston. Feeler gauges can also be used to check connecting rod side clearance. To do so, Find the feeler gauge that best fits the gap between the connecting rod and crankshaft and compare its thickness to the specifications in the service manual. Excessive side clearance can indicate a worn thrust bearing or crankshaft. You can use feeler gauges with our next tool, the straight edge, to get an idea of how flat the surface of a part is. Of course, not just any piece of metal that looks straight can serve as a straight edge. Straight edges are specially ground to have extremely flat edges. One of the most common uses of a straight edge is checking the bottom of the cylinder head for warpage. To do this, position the straight edge parallel to the cylinder head center line, as well as diagonally across the head while attempting to fit feeler gauges under the straight edge. Specifications for the maximum allowable clearance are in the service manuals. For example, for the 3.5 liter engine cylinder head we just looked at, the service limit is eight thousandths. You can use a straight edge to check other cylinder head surfaces for warpage and for checking other components, such as the block deck and intake and exhaust manifold surfaces. Groups 9 and 11 in the appropriate service manual contain procedures for making these checks. Sometimes a straight edge is used without a feeler gauge, such as when checking head bolts for stretching. To check a bolt, place the threads on the straight edge and check for a gap caused by stretched or damaged threads. If there is a gap, you must replace the bolt. Now that we've covered feeler gauges and straight edges, try answering this review question about piston ring end gap. The technician shown here is checking piston ring end gap. What is he not doing that would help ensure an accurate measurement? The answer is that he failed to use the piston to position the piston ring in the cylinder. Using the piston helps ensure the ring remains square to the bore.